All right, so now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on the back plate that I'm going to put on the back of the seat and the seat pads here. And I would normally use, well, sometimes you can use these things, you know, on just regular or whatever. But when it comes to cutting sheet metal or dealing with sheet metal, you want to make sure that your sheet metal is going to be bracketed down nice and solid. So I would suggest you use these kind of clamps to clamp this stuff down with. And I'm going to use my Harbor Freight uh, cutting shears right here. And I'm going to cut out this section here, which is about you know a half inch or so smaller than what the pad is. So here we go. Okay, so now, see I got all these waves in here after cutting it, and I also have some uh, sharp edges because as you cut, the way the shears work, they leave a little lip that's nice, that's really sharp, and here, hold on a second, okay, see that little lip right there? Okay, now that little lip I'm going to leave on there. And then on over here where there's not a lip, I'm going to grind it from the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this thing over and I'm going to grind at an angle all of this. I'm going to grind it all at an angle. Okay, so I just grounded that. And by doing this, by grinding at a nice steep angle, what I've done is I folded the steel over slightly on the other side. So I can feel the burrs from that grinding. But there's also a slight little lip there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some of my emery cloth. Where in the hell that, wherever that went. Here. I've got it over here. There we go. Mm, sweetest thing. I'm going to use this little piece of emery cloth and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand the burrs off and not the lip. Okay, because we're going to use that lip. When I go to put this on the back of the pad, that lip will help bite into the fabric. So the fabric, in the event we're shifting around too much, that slight little lip will help grip onto the fabric when I screw this on to the back of the... when I screw that on. Okay, so now it looks like the panel's going to fit pretty decently, size-wise, but because of all the folded material that I have on the corners, whoa, it really lifts it up away from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop off these corners here a little bit, and then drill, put the, or I'll have to paint this all up, and then I'll be putting the screws in hold it together okay I had to come back out here uh, I'm in the process of editing this video and I come to find out that a whole section of the video didn't get recorded um, what I had done is after I had made that panel um, I had drilled the holes I had cut the angle and what I decided to do was I pulled out this this around piece of steel around tubing and this is like two and seven eighths I think if I remember it's a chunk that, that uh, went to the uh, rat rod build when I was building that thing up for a friend of mine uh, he so this, this chunk is what that came off of so what I did was I put this here like that and I just pounded let me show you here quick 
make sure I'm recording now. So what I had done is I had just taken this and put the steel on it and then I had done this to it. See that slight round right there? I did that all to the whole to both pieces. So I thought I'd show you how I did this because the whole section of this video that was me showing you how I did this is uh got erased. So that's what I did. I went all the way around those panel those two panel pieces. Yep. All right. What I did there. Now, what I'll be doing. Now, after this, now I'm going to be cleaning it all off, and then I'll be painting it flat black. Yeah, you guys would be surprised at how much of these, how much of this I had to go through when I painted the Batmobile, and. I think I filled up a whole 55 gallon drum with nothing but empty cans. <laughs> okay, I'm lying on that. I actually went down and had somebody paint it for me. So, <laughs> all right, so I'll clean this up. All right, so now I've got the panel spray painted. I only put a little bit on the other side. Didn't go too into depth with that. But there we go. See? You can see all my pound marks with the hammer. <laughs> but because of that bend in there, when I go to put this on, it'll actually help bite into the fabric when I go to screw it in. Screws that I'll be using are these kind of things. Some people call these sheet metal screws. They are... They got a real nice girthy bit or uh, thread on them. Here, hold on. Let me put this in a better. Switch this camera over. To... Okay, there we go. Now I can get real close up. Okay, uh, they have. These are great screws to be used on for like laminate, and they have a little uh, angle cut out of the tip there to help drill right through stuff. They kind of self-tap themselves, kind of, in a way. And they are actually number two square bit. And I like those. I like these kind of things. Because I can stick them right on onto the end, number two square bit. And just z -z 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 screw stuff right in. So, yeah. Now I'm going to put this all together. Alright. There we go. That's the back part. And then when I go to put this on there, I'll be, because these screws stick out about an eighth of an inch, when I go to put on the angle iron, which will be on in back, which will be bracketed onto here, I'll have to make sure that I raise it up an eighth of an inch, so that way when I go to put this on, I'll be able to screw right up through the bottom of it. Yep. Pretty nice, huh? Yep, that's how it's done. Well, at least that's the way T-Man does it. <laughs> All right, now for the backrest. Isn't that weird? Pretty close, to the same size. Now for the backrest. Do this. Do the same thing. All right. Well, this one is the next piece uh, that's going to go on to the backrest. But the backrest is going to have a little bit, it's going to be a slightly different. I bent one edge and then put the angles in it. 
just cut these off and then vent it right at the points and this will be sitting well it'll be sitting like that on there and then I'll have one screwed in the top see that so what I'm gonna need to do now is I need to clean it and paint it so I'm gonna clean it first with a good old after I have my shot of lacquer oh look at la lacquer thinner then I'll clean the piece of steel with it <laughs> okay did the backrest remember when I uh, said that uh, the other side was the bad side because I had all the staples well what I did is I folded the steel over and did that with it and some of my staples are showing and stuff like that and you can see the, some of the pound marks from the hammer there we go so this will go on there like that yeah I'll make this the top part instead of the bottom because it looks kind of neat Yeah, pretty cool. And then all I have to do is when I go to put the uh, angle iron in here, offset it, you know, by maybe a quarter of an inch or something like that because of the the round of the steel now and these the heads of this. I'll just bring these up maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter, whatever, and then I'll be able to put this right up to there, and then drill right through the back, right through the steel and into the wood. Yeah, not too bad. Huh. Not too bad for being my first time I've ever building these things. Huh. Okay. Well, I hope that stuff was helpful to you guys. You know, there was a building a seat. Never done that before, like I said. But um, showed you a little bit of sheet metal work. And uh, yeah, okay. So you guys take it easy. And uh, I'll be putting out another video sometime, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, or I don't know when. So <laughs> comment down below and thumbs up this video. Who wouldn't knew the obstacles that I ran through were put through equivalent to loop is cool. Two or three lands I rule, not choose and tall enough to breathe that up.